so in this video we'll be picking up where we left off in the last video of Darker by E.L. James on chapter 7. I hope you guys are enjoying this book so far. Um, we are getting closer to the end. We're probably about a, I think we've got like a third of the book left. Yeah, it looks about right. So, um, I have been doing some research to try to find Freed, the next one in the series, but um, I haven't read anything about it um, online, when it's supposed to come out. I know it's not already out yet. Um, I haven't read anything. So, I did a lot of research and couldn't. I came up empty-handed. So, then I did research on how I could get in contact with maybe E.L. James or like her publicist or somebody finally got an email to I think her publicist so I sent off an email just trying to find out you know given a little bit of backstory of the situation and what why I'm looking for it um, and to see if anything so probably will never be seen and I probably won't get it and nothing will probably come of it but at least you know that I am trying to make sure that we get the next book um, out because really all that I've heard for about E.L. James is her new book coming out and no word on Freed so hopefully there's that but you know if we get to the end of this I do have another series um, that um, I'll be able to read in this same realm, you know, in the same genre of romance. Um, it is a vampire series. Um, the it's called the last true, uh, the last true vampire, the last true born vampire, something like that. It is by Kate Baxter, and it's a series. And so far, I think there's six or seven books out. Um, they're a little bit shorter than this, um, but like the book lengthwise, uh, I think they're a little shorter. And they are excellent and steamy, so spicy. So, um, you know, I do have a series lined up that will read in this area. When I do finish my the other series that I'm reading, the I Am Number 4 series, I'm going to start reading um, this new series that I read, which I flew through it. It was so good. Probably the best series I've ever read to date. Um, it is called it's a throne of glass series um by sarah j moss i think that's her name and um it's a fantastic series i love it it's um it's more in the realm of you know young young adult you know fantasy fiction type uh genre but it does have spicy moments um but there's a lot more plot in that, less sex, you know, a lot more plot. But it is something that kind of bridges both both of my loves of reading together very well. So I really hope that you may give that one a, a listen to as well. Um, it's wonderful. But so is the vampire series, and that one is has a lot a lot of sex, just like. Um, this series so anyway enough about that I will get into the reading uh, I just wanted to let you guys know a little bit of update with what's going on and uh, hopefully hopefully you guys are doing great okay um, what did I say this chapter was seven yes chapter seven Wednesday June 15 2011 I put my head in my hands and rubbed my face. I can't believe I asked Anna to marry me. And she didn't say no. She didn't say yes, either. She may never say yes. In the morning, she'll wake and come to her senses. The day started so well, but it's been a train wreck since this evening, since Layla. Well, at least she's safe and getting the help she needs. But at what cost, Anna? She knows. She now knows everything. She knows I'm a monster, but she's still here. Focus on the positive, Gray. My appetite has gone the same way as Anna's, and I'm exhausted. It's been an emotional evening. I get up from the kitchen counter. I've experienced more in the last half hour than I would have thought possible. This is what she does to you, Gray. She makes you feel. You know you're alive when you're with her. I can't lose her. I've only just found her. Confused and overwhelmed, I, dis I deposit my plate in the sink and head to my bedroom. It will be our bedroom if she says yes. Outside the bathroom, I hear a, sniffle, a stifled noise. She's weeping. 
I open the door and she's on the floor, curled up in the fetal position, wearing one of my t-shirts and sobbing. The sight of her in such despair is like a swift kick to my gut that leaves me breathless. It's intolerable. I crawl onto the floor. Hey, I murmur as I pull her into my arms. My lap. Please don't cry, Anna. Please. She snakes her arms around me and clings to me, but her crying shows no sign of abating. Oh, baby. Gently, I stroke her back, thinking about how much more her tears affect me than Layla's did, because I love her. She's brave and strong, and this is how I reward her, by making her cry. I'm sorry, baby, I whisper, holding her, and I start to rock to and fro as she weeps. I kiss her hair. Eventually, her crying subsides and she shudders, racked with dry sobs. I stand with her in my arms, carry her to the bedroom, and lay her down on the bed. She yawns and closes her eyes while I strip out of my pants and shirt. Leaving my underwear on, I slip into a t-shirt and switch off the lights. In bed, I hold her close. Within seconds, her breathing deepens and I know she's asleep. She's exhausted, too. I dare not move for fear of waking her. She needs sleep. In the dark, I try to make some sense of all that has occurred this evening. So much has happened. Too much. Just too much. Layla stands before me. She's a waif, and her stench makes me take a step back. The stench. No. The stench. He smells. He smells of nasty and dirt. It makes me sick. It makes sick come into my mouth. He's mad. I hide under the table. There you are, you little shit, you little prick. He has cigarettes. No, I call my mommy, but she doesn't hear me. She lies on the floor. Smoke comes out of my comes out of his mouth. He laughs and he holds my hair. The burn. I scream. I don't like the burn. Mommy's on the floor. I sleep beside her. She is cold. I cover her with my blankie. He's back. He's mad. Crazy stupid bitch. Get out of my way, you stupid fucking runt. He hits me and I fall. He goes. He locks the door. And it's mommy and me. And then she's gone. Where is mommy? Where is mommy? He holds the cigarette in front of me. No. He takes a puff. No. He presses against my skin. No. The pain. The smell. No. Christian! My eyes fly open. My eyes flick open. There's light. Where am I? My bedroom. Anna's out of bed, holding my shoulder, shaking me. You left. You left. You must have left. I mumble incoherently. She sits down beside me. I'm here, she says, and lays her palm on my cheek. You were gone. I only have nightmares when you're not here. I just went for a drink. I was thirsty. Closing my eyes, I rub my face, trying to separate fact from fiction. She hasn't left. She's looking down at me. Kind, kind Anna, my girl. You're here. Oh, thank God. I pull her down beside me on the bed. I just went to get a drink, she says, as I wrap my arms around her. She strokes my hair, she strokes my hair and my cheek. Christian, please, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, Anna. My mouth claims her. She tastes of orange juice, sweetness, and home. My body responds as I kiss her, her ear, her throat. I tuck her bottom lip with my teeth as I caress her body, my hand pushing up the t-shirt she's wearing. She trembles as I cup her breast and she moans into my mouth as my fingers find her nipple. I want you, I whisper. I need you. I'm here for you. Only you, Christian. Her words light a fire inside me. I kiss her again. Please never leave me. She grabs my t-shirt and I move so that she can pull it off. I pull her upright while kneeling between her legs and drag off her t-shirt. She looks up at me, her arms dark and full of hunger and longing. Holding her face, I kiss her and we sink onto the mattress. Her fingers tangle in my hair as she kisses me back, matching my, fev my fever, her tongue in my mouth, eager to please. Oh, Anna. Suddenly, she pulls back and pushes against my arms. Christian, stop. I can't do this. What? What's wrong? I murmur against her throat. No, please. I can't do this. Not now. I need some time. Please. Oh, Anna, don't overthink this, I whisper as my anxiety returns. I'm fully awake. She's rejecting me. No, I'm desperate. I tug her earlobe with my teeth and her body bows under my touch, and she gasps. I'm just the same, Anna. I love you, and I need you. Touch me, please. I stop and rub my nose against hers and stare down at her, holding my weight on my arms as I wait for her response. Our relationship rests on this moment. If she can't do this, if she can't touch me, if I can't have her, I wait. Please, Anna. Tentatively, she reaches up and places her hand on my chest. Heat and pain spiral across my chest as the darkness unleashes its claws. I gasp and close my eyes. I can do this. I can do this for her. My girl, Anna. She runs her hand up to my shoulder, her fingertips scalding my skin. I groan. I want this so much, and I dread it so much. To dread your lover's touch, what kind of fuck up am I? 
She pulls me down to her and moves her hands to my back, holding me, her palms on my flesh, branding me. My strangled cry is half-grown, half-sob. I bury my face in her neck, hiding, seeking solace from the pain, but kissing her, loving her, as her fingers cross the two scars on my back. It's almost unbearable. I kiss her, feverishly, losing myself in her tongue and in her mouth as I fight my demons, using only my lips and my hands. They skim over her body while her hands move over mine. The darkness is swirling, trying to dislodge her, but Anna's fingers are on me, caressing me, feeling me, gentle, loving, and I steel myself against my fear and the pain. I trail my lips down to her breasts and close them around one nipple, tugging until it's hard and standing at attention. She groans as her body rises to meet mine, and she scrapes her fingernails across the muscles on my back. It's too much. Fear erupts in my chest, hammering my heart. Oh, fuck, Anna! I cry out and stare down at her. She's panting, eyes bright and brimming with sensuality. This is turning her on. Fuck. Don't overthink this, Gray. Man up. Go with it. Taking a deep breath to slow my pounding heart, I stake my hand. I skate my hand down her body, over her belly, to her labia. I cup her and my fingers are wet with her anticipation. Easing them inside her, I circle them and she pushes her pelvis up to meet my hand. Anna. Her name is an invocation. I release her and sit up and her hands fall away so she's no longer touching me. I feel relieved and bereft at once. I remove my boxers, freeing my cock, and lean over to the bedside table for a condom. I hand it to her. You want to do this? You can still say no. You can always say no. Don't give me a chance to thank Christian. She's breathless. I want you to. She rips open the foil with her teeth and slowly, with trembling fingers, slides it onto me. Her fingers on my erection are torture. Steady. You're going to unman me, Anna. She gives me a quick, possessive smile. When she's done, I stretch over her. But I need to know she wants this, too. I roll us both over quickly. You, take me, I whisper, staring up at her. She licks her lips and sinks down onto me, taking me, inch by inch. Ugh. I tilt my head back and close my eyes. I'm yours, Anna. She grabs my hands and starts to move up and down. Oh, baby. Leaning forward, she kisses my chin and runs her teeth over my jaw. I'm going to come. Shit. I steal her with my hands on her hips. Slow, baby. Please, take this slow. Her eyes are full of passion and excitement, and I steal myself once more. Anna, touch me, please. Her eyes widen with sheer delight, and she spreads her hands on my chest. It's blistering. I cry out and thrust deep inside her. Ah! Uh! She whimpers, and her fingernails trail through my chest hair, tantalizing me, teasing me. But the darkness is pushing at each point of contact, determined to rupture my skin. It's so painful, so intense, tears spring to my eyes, and Anna's face blurs in a watery vision. I twist so that she's underneath me. Enough. No more. Please. She reaches up and clasps my face in her hands, wiping my tears, then pulling me down so that her lips are on mine. I drive into her, trying to find my equilibrium, but I'm lost. Lost to this woman. Her breath is at my ear, short, panting. She's reaching. She's close, but she's holding back. Let go, Anna, I whisper. No. Yes, I plead, and I shift and roll my hips, filling her. She moans, loud and clear, her legs tensing. Come on, baby, I need this. Give it to me. We need this. She lets go, convulsing around me and crying out while she wraps her legs and arms around my body and I find my release. Her fingers are in my hair while my head rests on her chest. She's here. She didn't leave. But I can't shake the feeling that I nearly lost her again. Don't ever leave me, I whisper. Above me, I feel her move her head, her chin lifting in that mulish way she has. I know you're rolling your eyes at me, I add, pleased that she's doing so. You know me well. There's humor in her tone. Thank God. I'd like to know you better. Back at you, Gray, she says, and asks me what torments me when I sleep. The usual. She insists that I tell her more. Oh, Anna, do you really want to know? She remains silent, waiting. I sigh. I must be about three, and the crack horse pimp is mad as hell. Again, he smokes and smokes, one cigarette after another, and he can't find an ashtray. Does she really want the shit in her head? The burn? The smell? The screaming? She tenses beneath me. It hurt, I mutter. It's the pain I remember. That's what gives me nightmares. That and the fact that she did nothing to stop him. Anna holds on to, on to, Anna's hold on me tightens. I lift my head, meeting her eyes. You're not like her. Don't ever think that, please. She blinks a couple of times and I lay my head on her chest again. The crack whore was weak. No maggot. Not now. She killed herself, abandoning me. Sometimes in the dream she's just lying on the floor and I think she's asleep, but she doesn't move. She never moves, and I'm hungry, really hungry. There's a loud noise and he's back and he hits me so hard, cursing the crack whore. His first reaction was always to use his fist or his belt. Is that why you don't like to be touched? 
I close my eyes and hold her tighter. That's complicated. I nuzzle the space between her breasts, surrounding myself with her essence. Tell me, she asks. She didn't love me. She can't have loved me. She didn't protect me. And she left me, alone. I didn't love me. The only touch I knew was harsh. It stemmed from there. I never had a mother's loving touch, Anna. Never. Grace respected my boundaries. I still don't know why. Flynn explains it better than I can. Can I see Flynn? She asks. Fifty shades rubbing off on you? I try to lighten the mood. And then some. Anna squirms. I like how it's rubbing off right now. I love her levity. Levity? Levity, sorry. I love her levity. And if she can joke about this, there's hope. Yes, Miss Steele. I like that, too. I kiss her and stare into the warm depths of her eyes. You're so precious to me, Anna. I was serious about marrying you. We can get to know each other then. I can look after you. You can look after me. We can have kids if you want. I will lay my world at your feet, Anastasia. I want you, body and soul, forever. Please think about it. I will think about it, Christian. I will. I'd really like to talk to Dr. Flynn, though, if you don't mind. Anything for you, baby. Anything. When would you like to see him? Sooner rather than later. Okay, I'll make the arrangements in the morning. I glance at the clock, 3.44. It's late. We should sleep. I switch off the light and pull her to me so we're spooning. I only spoon with Anna. I nuzzle her neck. I love you, Anna Steele. And I want you to be by my side, always. Now go to sleep. I'm woken by a commotion. Anna is leaping over me and onto the floor and heading for the bathroom. She's leaving? No. I check the time. Shit, it's late. I think this is the latest I've ever slept. She's going to work. Shaking my head, I call Taylor through the internal phone system. Good morning, Mr. Gray. Taylor, good morning. Could you take Miss Steele to work today? With pleasure, sir. She's rather late. I'll wait for her outside the front door. Great. Come back for me. Will do, sir. I sit up and Anna hurries out of the bathroom, drying herself and gathering her clothes at the same time. It's quite the, f the floor show, especially when she dons a pair of black lace panties and a matching lace bra. Yes, I could watch this all day. You look good. You can call in sick, you know, I offer. No, Christian, I can't. I'm, I am not a megalomaniac, CEO, with a beautiful smile who can come and go as he pleases. Beautiful smile? Megalomaniac? I grin. I like to come as I please. Christian! She sputters and throws the towel at me. I laugh. She's still here and I don't think she hates me. Beautiful smile, huh? Yes. You know the effect you have on me. She wraps her watch strap around her wrist and stops to fasten it. Do I? Yes, you do. The same effect you have on all women. Gets really tiresome watching them all swoon. Does it? I can't hide my amusement. Don't play the innocent, Mr. Gray. It really doesn't suit you. She yanks her hair up into a ponytail and puts on a pair of high-heeled shoes. Babies in black. She looks sensational. She bends down to kiss me goodbye and I can't resist. I pull her down onto the bed. Thank you for still being here, Anna. What can I do to tempt you to stay? I whisper. You can't. She grumbles and makes a feeble effort to fight me off. Let me go. I pout and she grins. Outlining my lips with her finger, she smiles, leans up, and kisses me. I close my eyes and enjoy the feel of her lips on mine. I release her. She needs to go. Taylor will take you, quicker than finding somewhere to park. He's waiting outside the building. Okay, thank you, she says. Enjoy your lazy morning, Mr. Gray. I wish I could stay, but the man who owns the company I work for would not approve of his staff ditching just for hot sex. She picks up her purse. Personally, Miss Steele, I have no doubt that he would approve. In fact, he might insist on it. Why are you staying in bed? It's not like you. Crossing my hands behind my head, I lean back and give her a broad smile. Because I can, Miss Steele. She shakes her head in mock disgust. Laters, baby. She blows me a kiss and hurries out the door. I hear her footsteps clatter down the hallway and then all is quiet. Anna's left for the day, and I miss her already. I grab my phone with the intention of writing an email to her, but what should I say? I told her so much last night I don't want to frighten her off with any more revelations. Keep it simple, Gray. From Christian Gray. Subject, missing you. Date, June 15, 2011, 9.05 a.m. To Anastasia Steele. Please use your Blackberry. X. Or kiss. Christian Gray. CEO, Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. I look around my bedroom and ponder how empty it feels without her. I type an email to her personal account. I need to make sure she's using her phone because I don't want anyone at SIP reading our emails. From Christian Gray. Subject, missing you. Date, 
June 15, 2011, 9.06 a.m. to Anastasia Steele. My bed is too big without you. Looks like I'll have to work, have to go to work after all. Even megal, megal, mega, megalomaniac CEOs need something to do. X. Christian Gray, twiddling his thumb, CEO, Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. I hope that will elicit a smile. I press send, then call Flynn's office. I leave a message. If Anna wants to see Flynn, she should see Flynn. With that done, I climb out of bed and head into the bathroom. After all, I do have a meeting with the mayor today. I'm ravenous after yesterday, even after yesterday's evening's events. I never ate dinner. Miss Jones has prepared a full breakfast for me. Eggs, bacon, ham, hash browns, waffles, and toast. Gail has gone to town. She's in her element. While I'm eating, I get a response from Anna. Her work email. From Anastasia Steele. Subject, all right for some. Date, June 15, 2011, 9.27 a.m. to Christian Gray. My boss is mad. I blame you for keeping me up. I, have gla I blame you for keeping me up late with your shenanigans. You should be ashamed of yourself. Anastasia Steele, assistant to Jack Hyde, editor, sit. Oh, Anna, I'm more ashamed of myself than you will ever know. From Christian Gray. Subject, shenana what again? Date, June 15, 2011, 9.32 a.m. to Anastasia Steele. You don't have to work, Anastasia. You have no idea how appalled I am at my shenanigans. But I like keeping you up late, winky face. Please use your Blackberry. Oh, and marry me, please. Christian Gray, CEO, Great Enterprises Holdings, Inc. Miss Jones is hovering about, about, about in the background while I eat my breakfast. More coffee, Mr. Gray. Please. Anna's response comes through on my phone. From, An from Anastasia Steele. Subject, living to make. Date, June 15, 2011, 9.35 a.m. To Christian Gray. I know your natural inclination is toward nagging, but just stop. I need to talk to your shrink. Only then will I give you my answer. I am not opposed to living in sin. Anastasia Steele, assistant to Jack Hyde, editor, sit. For fuck's sake, Anna. From Christian Gray. Subject, BLACKBERRY, in all caps. Date, June 15, 2011, 9.40 a.m. To Anastasia Steele. Anastasia, if you are going to start discussing Dr. Flynn, then use your BlackBerry in all caps. This is not a request. Christian Gray, now pissed CEO, Great Enterprises Holdings, Inc. My phone rings and it's Flynn's PA. He can see me tomorrow evening at 7. I ask her to have Flynn call me. I'll need to ask him about bringing Anna to the session. I'll see if I can schedule a call later. Thanks, Janet. I also want to know how Layla is this morning. I sent another email to Anna's account. This time, my tone is a little softer. From Christian Gray. Subject, discretion. Date, June 15, 2011, 9.50 a.m. To Anastasia Steele. Is the better part of valor. Please use discretion. Dot, dot, dot. Your work emails are monitored. How many times do I have to tell you this? Question mark. In all caps. Everything. Yes, shouty capitals, as you say. Use your BlackBerry, in all caps. Dr. Flynn can see us tomorrow evening. X, Christian Gray. Still piss CEO. Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. I hope that will please her. Two for dinner? Gail asks. Yes, Miss Jones. Thanks. I take a last swig of coffee and set my cup down. I like bantering with Anne over breakfast. If she marries me, she could be here every morning. Marriage, a wife. Gray, what were you thinking? What changes will I need to make if she agrees to marry me? I get up and stroll to the bathroom. I stop by the stairway to the upper floor. On impulse, I head up the stairs to the playroom, unlocking the door. I step inside. My recent memory of this room is not a good one. Well, you are one fucked up son of a bitch. Anna's words haunt me. A vision of her tear-stained, anguished face comes to mind. I close my eyes. Suddenly, I'm empty and aching, feeling a remorse so deep it cuts through sinew and bone. I never want to see her that unhappy again. Last night... She was sobbing. She cried her heart out. But this time, she let me comfort her. That's a huge difference from last time, isn't it? I gaze around the room. What will become of it, I wonder. I've had some amazing times in here. Anna on the cross. Anna shackled to the bed. Anna on her knees. I like your kinky fuckery. I sigh and my phone buzzes. It's a text from Taylor. He's outside waiting for me. With a last lingering look at what was once my safe place, I shut the door. My morning is uneventful. But there's a certain excitement running through GEH. It's not often that I host delegations to the company, but the mayor's visit is causing a buzz throughout the building. I get through a few early meetings and all seems to pl pl in place. At 11.30, when I'm back in my office, Andrea puts Flynn through to me. John, thanks for calling me. I assumed you wanted to talk about Layla Williams, but I noticed that you're in my schedule and I'm seeing you tomorrow evening. I asked Anna to marry me. John says nothing. 
You're surprised? I ask. Frankly, no. That's not what I expect him to say, but I let it go. He continues. Christian, you're impulsive, and you're in love. What did she say? She wants to talk to you. She's not my patient, Christian. But I am, and I'm asking you. He's silent for a moment. Okay, he says eventually. Please, tell her whatever she wants to know. If that's what you wish. I do. How's Layla? She had a comfortable night and was forthcoming this morning. I think I can help her. Good. Christian, he pauses. Marriage is a serious commitment. I know. Are you sure that's what you want? It's my turn to pause. Spend the rest of my life with Anna? Yes. It's not all rainbows and unicorns, John says. It's hard work. Rainbows? Unicorns? What the hell? I've never shied away from hard work, John. John laughs. That's true. I'll see you both tomorrow. Thanks. My phone buzzes, and it's another text from Elena. Elena, can we do dinner? Not at the moment, Elena. I just can't deal with her at this time. I press the lead. It's after midday, and I realize I've had nothing more. I've heard nothing more from Anna. I type a quick email. From Christian Gray. Subject, crickets. Date, June 15, 2011, 12.15 uh, p.m. To Anastasia Steele. I haven't heard from you. Please tell me you're okay. You know how I worry. I will send Taylor to check. Kiss. Christian Gray. Over Anxious, CEO, Great Enterprises Holdings, Inc. My next meeting is lunch. My next meeting is lunch with the mayor and his delegation. They want a tour of the building, and my PR guy is up beside himself. Sam's all about raising the profile of the company, though sometimes I think it's about elevating his own profile. Andrea knocks and opens the door. Sam's here, Mr. Gray, she says. Show him in. Oh, can you update the contacts on my phone? Sure. I hand her my phone, and she stands aside to let Sam enter. He gives me a, sup a supercilious smile and starts a run-through of the various photo opportunities he's planned for the tour. Sam is a pretentious man and a, re a recent hire I'm beginning to regret. There's a knock on the door, and Andrea pokes her head around. I have Anastasia Steele on the phone, on your phone, but I can't bring... But I can't bring it to you. It's downloading your contacts, and I'm not brave enough to stop it mid-sync. <laughs> I leap up, ignoring Sam, and follow her to her desk. She hands me the phone, which is on such a short cable I have to bend over her computer. Are you okay? I ask. Yes, I'm fine, Anna replies. Thank goodness. Christian, why wouldn't I be okay? You're normally so quick at responding to my emails. After what I told you yesterday, I was worried. I keep my voice low. I don't want Andrea or the new girl to hear me. Mr. Gray, Andrea is holding her phone to her neck and trying to get my attention. The mayor and his delegation are in reception downstairs. Shall I ask them to come up? No, Andrea, tell them to wait. She looks stricken. I think it's too late. They're on their way. No, I said wait. Shit. Christian, you're obviously busy. I only called to let you know that I'm okay, and I mean that just very busy today. And I mean that just very busy today. Jack has been cracking the whip, or I mean, she stops. What an interesting choice of words. Crap, cracking the whip, eh? Well, there was a time when I would have called him a lucky man. Don't let him get on top of you, baby. Christian, she scolds, and I grin. I like shocking her. Just watch him, that's all. Look, I'm glad you're okay. What time should I pick you up? I'll email you. From your Blackberry, I emphasize. Yes, sir. Laters, baby. Bye. I glance up and see the elevator is climbing to the executive floor. The mayor is on his way. Hang up. Hang up, she says, and I hear the smile in her voice. I wish you'd never gone to work this morning. Me too, but I am busy. Hang up. You hang up, I grin. We've been here before, she says in that teasing tone she has. You're biting your lip. She inhales quickly. You see? You think I don't know you, Anastasia, but I know you better than you think. Christian, I'll talk to you later. Right now, I really wish I hadn't left this morning, too. I'll wait for your email, Miss Steele. Good day, Mr. Gray. She hangs up as the elevator doors open. By 3.45, I'm back in my office. The mayor's visit was a success and a PR windfall for GEH. Andrea buzzes me. Yes? I have Mia Gray on the line for you. Put her through. Christian! Hi. We're having a birthday. We're having a party for your birthday on Saturday, and I want to invite Anastasia. What happened to hello? How are you? Mia makes a dismissive noise. Spare me one of your lectures, big brother. I'm busy on Saturday. Cancel it. It's happening. Mia, no ifs or buts. What's Anna's number? I sigh and stay silent. Christian, she shouts down the phone. Jesus, I'll text it to you. 
No bailing. You'll disappoint Mom and Dad and me and Elliot. I sigh. Whatever, Mia. Great. See you then. Bye. She hangs up, and I stare at the phone with frustrated amusement. My sister is a pain in the ass. I hate birthdays. Well, my birthday. Reluctantly, I text Mia Anna's number, knowing that I'm unleashing the force that is my little sister on an unsuspecting victim. I go back to reading a report. When I finish, I check my email, and there's one from Anna. From Anastasia Steele. Subject. This is a word. I'm going to butcher it. Sorry. Antidiluvian. -dilu okay. Date, June 15th, 2011, 1611, oh god, sorry, <laughs> uh, crap, what is that? So if you haven't noticed, I usually stumble on the time because it's written in military time, and I try not to give it in military time, so, um, 4, yeah, 411 p.m., to Christian Gray. Dear Mr. Gray, when exactly were you going to tell me? What shall I get my old man for his birthday? Perhaps some new batteries for his hearing aid? A. X. Anastasia Steele, assistant to Jack Hyde, editor, sip. Mia is, uh, Mia is as good as her word. She hasn't wasted any time. I have some fun with my response. From Christian Gray, subject, prehistoric, date, June 15, 2011, 4.20 p.m. to Anastasia Steele. Don't mock the elderly. Glad you are alive and kicking, and that Mia has been in touch. Batteries are always useful. I don't like celebrating my birthday. X. Christian Gray, deaf as a poet, CEO, <laughs> Gray, Enterprises Holdings, Inc. From, from Anastasia Steele. Subject. Hmm. Date, June 15, 2011, 424 p.m. To Christian Gray. Dear Mr. Gray, I can imagine you pouting as you wrote that last sentence. That does things to me. A. <laughs> XOX. Anastasia Steele, assistant to Jack Hyde, editor, sip. Her reply makes me laugh out loud, but what do I have to do to make her use her phone? From Christian Gray. Subject, rolling eyes. Date, June 15, 2011, 4.29 p.m. To Anastasia Steele. Miss Steele. Will you use your Blackberry? X. Christian Gray. Twitchy palmed CEO. See, uh, Great Enterprise Holdings, Inc. I await her answer. It does not disappoint. From Anastasia Steele. Subject, Inspiration. Date, June 15, 2011, 4.33 p.m. to Christian Gray. Dear Mr. Gray, uh, your twitchy palms can't stay still for long, can they? I wonder what Dr. Flynn would say about that. But now I know what to give you for your birthday, and I hope it makes me sore. Ooh, and I hope it makes me sore. Wink face. A. X. Finally, she's finally she's using her phone, and she wants to be sore. My mind goes into overdrive, imagining the possibilities this presents. I shift in my seat as I type my response. From Christian Gray, subject, and angina, date June fifteenth, twenty eleven, four thirty eight p.m. To Anastasia Steele, Miss Steele, I don't think my heart could stand the strain of another email like that, or my pants for that matter. Behave, X. Christian Gray, CEO, Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. From Anastasia Steele, subject, trying, date, June 15, 2011, 4.42 p.m. To Christian Gray, Christian, I am trying to work for my very trying boss. Please stop bothering me and being trying yourself. Your last email nearly made me combust. X. P.S. Can you pick me up at 6.30? From Christian Gray. Subject, I'll be there. Date, June 15, 2011, 4.47 p.m. To Anastasia Steele. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Actually, I can think of any number of things that would give me greater pleasure, and they all involve you. X. Christian Gray, CEO, Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. Taylor and I pull up outside her office at 6.27 p.m. I should only have a few minutes to wait. I wonder if she's had any thoughts about my proposal. Of course, she needs to talk to Flynn first. Perhaps he'll tell her not to be a fool. The thought depresses me. I wonder if our days are numbered. But she knows the worst, and she's still here. I think there's room for hope. I check my watch, 638, and stare at the door of her office building. Where is she? Suddenly, she's in the street, the door swinging behind her. She doesn't head toward the car. What gives? She stops, looks around, and slowly sinks to the ground. Fuck. I open the car door and notice out of the corner of my eye that Taylor is doing the same. We both rush to Anna, who is sitting on the sidewalk, looking faint. I sit down net beside her. Anna! Anna! What's wrong? I pull her into my lap to check what's wrong, holding her head between my hands. She closes her eyes and sags against me as if in relief. Anna! I grasp her arms and shake her. What's wrong? Are you sick? 
Jack, she whispers. Fuck. Adrenaline sweeps through my body, leaving a murderous fury in its wake. I glance up at Taylor. He nods and disappears into the building. What did that sleazeball do to you? Anna giggles. <laughs> it's what I did to him. And she doesn't stop laughing. She's hysterical. I'm going to kill him. Anna! I give her a shake. Did he touch you? Only once, she whispers, and her giggling stops. Rage fuels my muscles as I stand holding her in my arms. Where's that fucker? From inside the building, we can hear muffled shouts. I set Anna on her feet. Can you stand? She nods. Don't go in. Don't, Christian. Get in the car. Christian, no. She claps my arm. Get in the goddamn car, Anna. I'm going to kill him. No, please, she begs. Stay. Don't leave me on my own. I drag my hand through my hair, trying and failing to hang on in my temper, while the muffled shouting inside Sip intensifies. Abruptly, it stops. I pull out my phone. Christian, he has my emails. Anna says in a whisper. What? My emails to you. He wanted to know where your emails to me were. He was trying to blackmail me. I think I'm going to have a coronary. A coroner. A coroner. Coronary. Blech. That motherfucking asshole. Fuck, I growl as I call Barney. Hello? Barney, Gray, I need you to access the SIP main server and wipe all Anastasia Steele's emails to me. Then access the personal data files of Jack Hyde and check they aren't stole, stored there. If they are, wipe them. Hyde, H-Y-D-E? Yes, all of them, all of them. Now let me know when it's done. Will do. I hang up and dial Roach's number. Jerry Roach, Roach, Gray. Good evening. Hyde, I want him out, now. But... Roach blusters. This minute, call security. Get him to clear his desk immediately or I will liquidate this company first thing in the morning. Is there a reason? Roach tries again. You already have all the justification you need to give him his pink slit. You've read his confidential file? I ignore his question. Do you understand? Mr. Gray, I completely understand. Our HR director is always defending him. I'll see it to it. Good evening. I hang up, feeling somewhat mollified, and turn to Anna. Blackberry! Please don't be mad at me. I'm so mad at you right now, I snap. Get in the car. Christian, please. Get in the fucking car, Anastasia, or assault me. So help me, I'll put you in there myself. Don't do anything stupid, please, she says. Stupid? I see red. I told you to use your fucking Blackberry. Don't talk to me about stupid. Get in the motherfucking car, Anastasia, now. Okay, she holds up her hands. But please be careful. Stop shouting at her, Gray. I point to the car. Please be careful, she whispers again. I don't want anything to happen to you. It would kill me. And there it is. She cares. Her affection for me is plain in her words and in her kind, concerned expression. Calm down, Gray. I take a deep breath. I'll be careful, I say. And I watch her walk to the Audi and climb in. Once she's in the car, I turn on my heel and stride into the building. I have no idea where to go, but I follow Hyde's voice. His irritating, whiny voice. Taylor is standing outside an executive office beside what must be Anna's desk. Inside, Hyde is on the phone and a security guard stands over him and is with his arms crossed. I don't give a fuck, Jerry. Hyde is protesting into the phone. The woman is a prick tease. I've heard enough. I storm into his office. What the? Hyde says, shocked to see me. He has a cut over his left eye and a purplish bruise is forming on his cheek. I suspect Taylor has been administering his own brand of discipline. I reach down to the phone cradle and press the hook, ending his call. Well, look what the fucking cat dragged in, Hyde says and sneers. The boy fucking wonder. Pack your things, get out, and she may not press charges. Fuck you, Gray. I'll be pressing charges against that little bitch for kicking me in the balls in a completely unprovoked attack, and I'll be sending your goon here down for assault, too. Hi, handsome, he calls to Taylor and blows him a kiss. Taylor remains stoic. I won't tell you again, I stare, glaring at the cocksucker. Like I said, fuck you. You can't come in here throwing your fucking weight around. I own this company. You are surplus to requirements. Get out while you still can walk. My tone is low. The color drains from Hyde's face. Yeah, mine. Fuck you, Hyde. I knew it. I knew something shady was going on. That little bitch your spy... If you mention Anastasia once more, if you even think about her, if you even think about thinking about her, I will end you. His eyes narrow. You like it when she kicks you in the balls? I hit him square on the nose, and he topples backward and smacks his head on the shelves behind him before he slumps onto the floor. You mentioned her. Get up. Clear your desk and get out. You're fired. Blood is pouring from his nose. Taylor steps into his office with a box of tissues and places them on the desk for Hyde. 
You saw him. Hyde whines to the security guard. I saw you fall, the security guard says. The name on his badge is M. Mather. Good job. Hyde struggles onto his feet and grabs a handful of tissues to stem his nosebleed. I'm pressing charges. She attacked me. Hyde continues to snivel, but he begins to put his belongings in the box. Three hushed-up harassment cases in New York and Chicago, and the two warnings you've had here, I don't think you get very far. He regards me with dark eyes and undulated, fear, feral hatred. Pack your things. You're done, I spit. Turning, I head out of his office to wait with Taylor while Hyde packs up his stuff. I need to distance myself. I want to kill him. He takes forever, but he does it in silence. He's mad. Real mad. I can almost smell his blood boiling. He gives me the occasional poisonous glance, but I remain impassive. The sight of his messed up face gives me some satisfaction. Eventually, he's done and picks up, his, picks up the box. Mather follows him out of the building. Are we finished here, Mr. Gray? Taylor asks. For now. I found him groveling on the floor, sir. Really? Miss Steele appears to know how to defend herself. She's always full of surprises. Let's go. We follow Hyde out of the building, and both of us head to the odd Audi. Because Anna is already in the front seat, Taylor gives me the key, and I slide to the driver's side. seat. Taylor gets in the back. Anna is quiet as I pull out into the traffic. I don't know what to say to her. The car phone rings. Gray, I answer. Mr. Gray, Barney here. Barney, I'm on speakerphone, and there are others in the car. Sir, it's all done, but I need to talk to you about what else I found on Mr. Hyde's computer. I'll call you when I reach my destination, and thanks, Barney. No problem, Mr. Gray. He hangs up, and I stop at the red light. At a red light. Are you talking to me? Anna asks. I glance at her. No, I mutter. I'm still too mad. I told her she, I told her he was trouble, and I told her to use her phone for email. I was right about everything. I feel vin vindicated. Vindic vindicated. Greg, grow up. You're behaving like a child. Flynn's words circle my brain. I've long held the belief that you never really had an adolescence. Emotionally speaking, I think you're experiencing it now. I glance across at her in the hope I can say something amusing, but she's staring out of the window. I'll wait until we get home. Outside Escala, I open Anna's car door while Taylor climbs into the driver's seat. Come, I say, and she takes my hand. While we wait for the elevator, Anna whispers, Christian, why are you so mad at me? You know why. As we enter the elevator, I punch the code into the keypad. God, if something had happened to you, he'd be dead by now. As it is, I'm going to ruin his career so he can't take advantage of young women anymore. Miserable excuse for a man that he is. If anything had happened to her, Layla yesterday, hide today, hell. Slowly, she sinks her teeth into her lower lip while staring at me. Jesus, Anna. I pull her to me and tug and twist so that she's pinned in the corner of the elevator, tugging her hair, upturning her face. I capture her lips with mine and pour my fear and desperation into my kiss. Her hands grasp my biceps as she returns my kiss, her tongue seeking mine. I pull back and we're both breathless. If anything had happened to you, if he'd harmed you, I shudder. Blackberry, from now on, understand? She nods, her expression earnest, and I straighten up and release her. He said you kicked him in the balls. Yes. Good. Ray is ex-army. He taught me well. I'm very glad he did. I'll need to remember that. As we exit the elevator, I take her hand and we walk through the foyer and into the living room. Miss Jones is in the kitchen cooking. It smells good. I need to call Barney. I won't be long. Sitting down at my desk, I pick up the phone. Mr. Gray, Barney, what did you find on Jack on Hyde's computer? Well, sir, it was a little unsettling. There are articles and photographs of you, your mom and dad, and your brother and sister, all stored in one folder called Gray's. That's odd. That's what I thought. Could you send me what he has? Yes, sir. And keep this between us for now. we Will do, Mr. Gray. Thanks, Barney. And go home. Yes, sir. Barney's email arrives almost immediately, and I open the Gray's folder. Sure enough, there are online articles about my parents and their charitable work, articles on me, my company, Charlie Tango, and the Gulf Stream, and photographs of Elliot, my parents, and me taken, I assume, from Mia's Facebook page, and last, two photos of Anna and me at her graduation and at the pho photographer's exhibition. What the hell would Hyde want with all of this shit? It makes no sense. I know he has a thing for Anna that's consistent with his modious apparende. Apparende, but my family? Me? It's like he's obsessed with us. Or maybe it's all about Anna. This is weird and frankly disturbing. I resolve to call Welch in the morning to discuss. He can investigate further and get me some answers. I close the email and sitting in my inbox are a couple of final acquisition agreements from Marco. I need to read them tonight, but first, some dinner. Evening, Gail. I call out to her when I'm back in the living room. Good evening, Mr. Gray. Dinner in ten, sir. 
Anna is sitting at the kitchen counter with a glass of wine. After dealing with that asshole, I think she's earned it. I'll join her. I retrieve the open bottle of Sancre and pour one for myself. Sounds good. I respond to Gail and raise my glass to Anna, to ex-military men who train their daughters well. Cheers, she says, but she looks a little crestfallen. What's wrong? I don't know if I still have a job. Do you still want one? Of course. Then you still have one. She rolls her eyes and I smile and take another sip of my wine. So, did you talk to Barney? She asks as I take a seat beside her. I did. And? And what? And did Jack have... What did Jack have on his computer? Nothing important. Miss Jones places our food in front of us. Chicken pot pie, one of my favorites. Thanks, Gail. Enjoy, Mr. Gray. Anna, she says pleasantly and departs. You're not going to tell... Oh, you're not going to tell me, are you? Anna persists. Tell you what? She sighs and purses her lips, then takes another bite of her, of her meal. The contents of Jack's computer are not something I want Anna to worry about. Jose called, she says, changing the subject. Oh, he wants to deliver your photos on Friday. A personal delivery? Why is the artist doing this and not the gallery? How accommodating of him. He wants to go out for a drink with me. I see. And Kate and Elliot should be back. I put my fork down on my plate. What exactly are you asking? I'm not asking anything. I'm informing you of my plans for Friday. Look, I want to see Jose, and he wants to stay over. Either he stays here, or he can stay at my place. But if he does, I should be there too. He made a pass at you. Christian, that was weeks ago. He was drunk. I was drunk. You saved the day. It won't happen again. He's no Jack, for heaven's sake. Ethan's there. He can keep him company. He wants to see me, not Ethan, Anna says. I scowl at her. He's just a friend, she continues. He's al she's already endured Hyde. What if Rodriguez gets drunk and tries his luck again with Anna? I don't like it. Anna takes a deep breath. She's trying to keep her cool. He's my friend, Christian. I haven't seen him since his show, and that was too brief. I know you don't have any friends apart from that god-awful woman, but I don't moan about you seeing her. What has Elena got to do with this? And I'm reminded that I haven't responded to her texts. I want to see him, she continues. I've been a poor friend to him. Is that what you think, I ask. Think about what? Elena, you'd rather I didn't see her. Exactly. I'd rather you didn't see her. Why didn't you say? Because it's not my place to say. You think she's your only friend. She's exasperated. Just as it's not your place to say if I can or can't see Jose. Don't you see that? She has a point. If he stays here, then he can't make a pass at her, can he? He can stay here, I suppose. I can keep an eye on him. Thank you. You know, if I'm going to live here too, her voice trails off. Yes, she'll need to invite her friends here. Jesus, I hadn't thought about that. It's not like you haven't... Oh, it's not like you haven't got the space. She waves a hand in the general direction of my apartment. Are you smirking at me, Miss Steele? Most definitely, Mr. Gray. She gets up and clears both of our plates. Gail will do that, I say as she sashays over to the dishwasher. But I'm too late. I've done it now. I have to. I have worked for a while. I have to work for a while. Cool. I'll find something to do. Come here. She steps between my legs and puts her arms around my neck. I hold her close against me. Are you okay? I whisper into her hair. Okay. After what happened with that fucker. After what happened yesterday. I lean back and study her expression. Yes. She replies, solemn and emphatic. To try to reassure me? I tighten my arms around her. What a weird couple of days this has been. Too much, too fast, maybe. My And my old life impinging on my new one. She still hasn't responded to my marriage proposal. Perhaps I should push her for an answer right now. She holds me close, and for the first time since this morning, I feel calm and centered. Let's not fight. I kiss her hair. You smell heavenly, as usual, Anna. So do you. She kisses my neck. Reluctantly, I release her and stand. I have to read those agreements. It should only be a couple of hours. My eyes are tired. I rub my face and pinch the bridge of my nose and glance out of the window. It's getting dark, but I've finished going through both documents. I've made notes and for forwarded them to Marco. Now it's time to find Anna. Maybe she'd like to watch TV or something. I loathe TV, but I'd sit with her and watch a film. I expect to find her in the library, but she's not there. Maybe she took a bath. No, she's not in the bedroom or the ensuite. I decide to check the sub's room, but on my way there, I notice that the playroom door is open. Looking inside, I see Anna is sitting on the bed, gazing with distaste at all the canes. 
With a grimace, she looks away. I should get rid of them. I lean against the door frame in silence and watch her. She slips from the bed onto the couch, her hands running over the soft leather. She spies the chest of drawers, rises, makes her way toward it, and opens the top drawer. Well, this is unexpected. From the chest, she pulls out a large butt plug and, fascinated, examines it, then tests the weight in her hand. It's a little big for a newcomer to anal pleasure, but I'm mesmerized by her captivated expression. Her hair is a little damp, and she's wearing sweatpants and a t-shirt. No bra. Nice. Glancing up, she spots me by the door. Hi, she says, all breathy and nervous. What are you doing? She blushes. Um, I was bored and curious. That's a very dangerous combination. I wander into the room to join her. Leaning over, I glance at the open door to see what else is inside. So what exactly are you curious about, Miss Steele? Perhaps I could enlighten you. The door was open, she says hastily. I... She stops, looking guilty. Put her out of her misery, Gray. I was in here earlier today, wondering what to do with it all. I must have forgotten to lock it. Oh? But now you are here, curious as ever. You're not mad? Why would I be mad? I feel like I'm trespassing, and you're always mad at me. Am I? Yes, you're trespassing, but I'm not mad. I hope that one day you'll live with me here, and all this. I wave my hand around the room. We'll be yours, too. That's why I was in here today, trying to decide what to do. I watch her expression, thinking about what she's just said. I'm mostly angry at myself, not her. Am I angry with you all the time? I wasn't this morning. She smiles. You were playful. I like playful, Christian. Do you now? I ask, raising an eyebrow and returning her smile. I love her compliments. What's this? She holds up the toy she's been examining. Always hungry for information, Miss Steele. That's a butt plug. Oh. She looks surprised. <laughs> Bought for you. For me? I nod. You buy new er, toys for each submissive? Some things, yes. Butt plugs? Definitely, yes. She eyes it warily and places it back in the drawer. And this? She waves some anal beads at me. Anal beads. She runs them through her fingers, intrigued, I think. They have quite an effect if you pull them out. Oh, they have quite an effect if you pull them out mid-orgasm, I add. This is for me? She asks, referring to the beads. She keeps her voice low as if she doesn't want to be overheard. For you. This is the butt drawer. I stifle my chuckle, if you like. She turns a lovely shade of pink and closes it. Don't you like the butt drawer? I tease. It's not top of my Christmas card list. That's her smart mouth. There's her smart mouth. She opens the second drawer. Oh, this will be fun. Next drawer down holds a selection of vibrators. She shuts it quickly. And the next? That's more interesting. Slowly, she opens the next one, the next one down. She picks out a toy and shows it to me. Genital clamp. Hastily, she puts it back in the drawer and chooses something else. I remember they were a hard limit for her. Some of these are for pain, but most are for pleasure, I reassure her. What's this? Nipple clamps. That's for both. Both nipples? Well, there are two clamps, baby. Yes, both nipples, but that's not what I meant. These are for both pleasure and pain. I take them from her. Hold out your little finger. She complies, and I clamp the clip to the tip of her finger. Her breath catches. The sensation is very intense, but it's when taking them off that they are at their most painful and pleasurable. She removes the clip. I like the look of these. Her voice is now husky, making me smile. Oh, I like the look of these. Her voice is now husky and making me smile. Do you now, Miss Steele? I think I can tell. She nods and places the clips back in the drawer. I lean forward and remove another set for her consideration. These are adjustable. I hold them up to demonstrate. Adjustable? You can wear them very tight or not, depending on your mood. Her eyes move from the clamp to my face and she licks her lower lip. She pulls out another toy. This? She's intrigued. That's a Wartenberg pinwheel. A Wartenberg pinwheel. I pop the adjustable clamps back into the drawer. Four? I take it from her. Give me your hand, palm up. She does and I run the spiky wheel over the center of her hand. Ah! She gasps. Imagine that over your breasts. She snatches her hand away, but the quick fall and rise of her chest reveals her excitement. This is turning her on. There's a fine line between pleasure and pain, Anastasia. I place the pinwheel back in the drawer. She's looking at the other contents. Clothespins? You can do a great deal with a clothespin, but I don't think it would be your thing, Anna. She leans against the drawer, closing it. Is that all? This is turning me on, too. I should take her downstairs. No. 
She shakes her head, and opening the fourth drawer, she retrieves one of my favorite devices. Ball gag, to keep you quiet, I inform her. Soft limit, I remember, but you can still breathe. Your teeth clamp over the ball. Taking it from her, I demonstrate with my hands how a ball gag fits into a mouth. Have you worn one of these? She asks, curious as ever. Yes. To mask your screams? No, that's not what they're about. She cocks her head to the one side, perplexed. It's about control, Anastasia. How helpless would you be if you were tied up and couldn't speak? How trusting would you have to be, knowing I had that much power over you? That I had to read your body and your reaction, rather than hear your words. It makes you more dependent, puts me in ultimate control. You sound like you miss it. Her voice is barely audible. It's what I know. You have power over me. You know you do. Do I? You make me feel helpless. No. She counters, shocked, I think. Why? Because you're the only person I know who could really hurt me. You hurt me You hurt me when you left. I tuck her hair behind her ear. Oh, Christian, that works both ways. If you didn't want me... A tremor runs through her, and she gazes down at, my fa- at her fingers. The last thing I want to do is hurt you. I love you. She strokes my face with both her hands, and I savor her touch. It's both arousing and comforting. I drop the ball gag back onto the drawer and fold her in my arms. Have we finished show and tell? Why? What did you want to do? Her tone is suggestive. I kiss her gently, and she presses her body against mine, making her intention clear. She wants me. Anna, you were nearly attacked today. So? She breathes. What do you mean, so? I feel a rush of annoyance. Christian, I'm fine. Are you, Anna? I pull her closer, squeezing her. When I think of what might have happened, I bury my face in her hair and breathe. When will you learn that I'm stronger than I look? I know you're strong. You put up with me. I kiss her and release her. She pouts into my surprise, reaches down, and fishes out another toy from the drawer. I thought we were done. That's a spreader bar with ankle and wrist restraints, I tell her. How does it work? She looks up at me through her lashes. Oh, baby, I know that look. You want me to show you? I close my eyes, briefly imagining her shackled at my mercy. It's arousing. Very arousing. Yes, I want a demonstration. I like being tied up. Oh, Anna, I whisper. I want to, but I can't in here. What? Not here. What do you mean? I want you in my bed, not in here. Come. I take the bar and her hand and lead her out of the room. Why not in there? I stop on the stairs. Anna, you may be ready to go back in there, but I'm not. Last time we were in there, you left me. I keep telling you. When will you understand? My whole attitude has changed as a result. My whole outlook on life has radically shifted. I've told you this. Why haven't you... What I haven't told you is... I pause, searching for the right words. I'm like a recovering alcoholic, okay? That's the only comparison I can draw. The compulsion has gone, but I don't want to put temptation in my way. I don't want to hurt you. And I can't trust you to tell me what you will and won't do. She frowns. I can't bear to hurt you because I love you, I add. Her eyes soften, and before I can stop her, she launches herself at me, so I have to drop the spreader bar to prevent us both from toppling down the stairs. She pins me to the wall, and because she's standing on the step above me, we are lip to lip. She cups my face with both her hands and kisses me, pushing her tongue in my mouth. Her fingers are in my hair as she molds her body to mine. Her kiss is passionate, forgiving, and unrestrained. I groan and gently push her away. Do you want me to fuck you on the stairs, I growl, because right now I will. Yes, she says. I look at her dazed expression. She wants this, and I'm tempted, as I've never fucked on the stairs, but it was it will be uncomfortable. No, I want you in my bed. Scooping her up over my shoulder, I'm gra- gratified by her squeal of delight. I smack her hard on her backside, and she squeals again and laughs. Stooping, I pick up the spreader bar and carry it and Anna through the apartment to the bedroom, where I set her on her feet and drop the spreader bar on the bed. I don't think... Oh. I don't think you'll hurt me, she says. I don't think I'll hurt you either. I take her head head in my hands and kiss her hard, exploring her mouth with my tongue. I want you so much. Are you sure about this? After today. Yes, I want you too. I want to undress you. Shit, she wants to touch you, Gray. Let her. Okay. I managed this yesterday. She reaches for my shirt button and my breathing halts as I endeavor to bring my fear under control. I won't touch you if you don't want me to. No, do. It's fine. I'm good. I steel myself, preparing for the confusion and fear that comes with the darkness. As she undoes one, undoes one button and her finger slides down to the next, I watch the concentration on her face, her beautiful face. I want to kiss you there. Oh, I want to kiss you there, she says. Kiss me? My chest? Yes. 
I inhale sharply as she undoes the next button. She looks up at me, then slowly, so slowly, slowly leans forward. She's going to kiss me. I hold my breath and watch her, terrified and fascinated at once as she plants this gentle, sweet kiss on my chest. The darkness remains quiet. She undoes the final button and pulls my shirt apart. It's getting, it's getting easier, isn't it? I nod. It is. Much easier. She pushes my shirt off my shoulder so it drops to the floor. What have you done to me, Anna? Whatever it is, don't stop. I pull her into my embrace and move my hands into her hair, gripping it and tugging her head back so I can kiss and nip her, nip her throat. She groans and her fingers are in my waistband, undoing my button and my fly. Oh, baby, I whisper and kiss her behind her ear where her pulse beats a fast, steady rhythm of need. Her fingers brush my erection and abruptly she drops to her knees. Whoa! Before I can draw a breath, she tugs my, at my pants and wraps her lips around my eager cock. Fuck. She closes her mouth around me and sucks hard. I cannot take my eyes off her mouth. Around me, drawing me in. Out. She sheaths her teeth and squeezes. Fuck. I close my eyes, cradling her head and flexing my hips so that I move deeper and deeper into her mouth. She taunts me with her tongue and moves her mouth up and down, again and again. I tighten my grip on her head. Anna, I warn, and try to step back. She clamps down on my cock and grabs my hips. She's not going to let me go. Please. And I don't know if I want her to stop or carry on. I'm going to come, Anna. She's merciless. Her mouth and tongue skilled. She's not going to stop. Oh, fuck. I climax into her mouth, holding her head to steady myself. When I open my eyes, she's gazing up at me in triumph. She smiles and licks her lips. Oh, so this is the game we're playing, Miss Steele. I reach down and pull her to her feet, and my lips find hers. With my tongue in her mouth, I taste her sweetness and my saltiness. It's heady. I groan. I can taste myself. You taste better. I find the hem of her t-shirt and lift it over her head. Then I pick her up and toss her onto the bed. Grabbing the hem of her sweatpants, I yank them off in one move, She's and so she's naked. I take my clothes off, keeping my eyes on her. They darken, getting larger and larger until I'm naked, too. I stand over her. She's a nymph sprawled out on the bed. Her hair a chestnut halo, her eyes warm and wet, welcoming. My cock recovers, growing and growing as I appreciate every inch of my girl. Yeah, she's gorgeous. You are one beautiful woman, Anastasia. You are one beautiful man, Christian, and you taste mighty fine. Her smile is sexy and coitish. I give her a wicked grin. I'm going to take my revenge on Miss Steele. Grabbing her left ankle, I strap the cuff around it, keeping my eyes on hers the whole time. We'll have to see how you taste. If I recall, you're a rare, exquisite delicacy, Miss Steele. I grasp her right ankle and cuff that, too. While holding the bar, I stand back to admire my handiwork, happy that she's secure and that the straps aren't too tight. The good thing about this spreader is that it expands, I inform her. I push down on the clip and tug outward, and the bar extends, forcing her legs further apart. Anna gasps. Oh, we're going to have some fun with this, Anna. Reaching down, I grab the bar and twist it quickly so that Anna flips onto her front. See what I can do to you? I twist again and flip her onto her back. Her breasts rise and fall as she pants. These other cuffs are for your wrists. I think that... I'll think about that. Depends if you behave or not. When do I not behave? Her voice is husky with desire. I can think of a few infractions. I run my fingers up the soles of her feet and she rides. You're Blackberry, for one. What are you going to do? Oh, I never disclose my plans. She has no idea how hot she looks right now. Slowly I crawl up the bed until I'm between her legs. Hmm, you are so exposed, Miss Steele. I whisper, her eyes locked together as I run my fingers up her legs, making small circles. It's all about anticipation, Anna. What will I do to you? She tries to wiggle beneath me, but she's trapped. My fingers travel higher to her inner thighs. Remember, if you don't like something, just tell me to stop. I lean down and kiss her belly, my nose ringing her, ringing her navel. Oh, please, Christian. Oh, Miss Steele, I've discovered you can be merciless in your armorous assaults upon me. I think I should return the favor. I kiss her belly and my lips move south, my fingers north. Slowly, I ease my fingers inside her. She jerks her pelvis up to embrace them. I moan. You never cease to amaze me, Anna. You're so wet. Her pubic hair tickles my lips, but I persist and my tongue finds her clitoris pert and eager for attention. Ugh. She cries and braces against her restraints. Oh, baby, you're mine. I swirl my tongue around and around and move my fingers in and out, rotating slowly. She arches off the bed and from the corner of my eye, I can see her clutching the sheets. Absorb the pleasure, Anna. Oh, Christian, she cries out. I know, baby. I, j I blow gently on her. Ugh, please. She pleads, say my name. Christian, she exclaims again. Christian, Christian, Christian Gray, she shouts. 
She's close. You are mine, I whisper, and suck and flick with her with my tongue. She cries out as she comes around my fingers, and while she's in the throes of her orgasm, I crawl back and flip her over onto her stomach and pull out, pull her onto my lap. We're going to try this. If you don't like it, or if it's too uncomfortable, tell me and we'll stop. She's breathless and dazed. Lean down, baby. Head and chest on the bed. She complies immediately, and I tug her hands backward and cuff each of the each to the bar next to her ankles. Oh, man. Her ass is in the air. She's breathing heavily, wanting, waiting for me. Anna, you look so beautiful. I grab a condom and gently rip open, and quickly rip open the packet and roll it on. I run my fingers down her spine and pause over her ass. When you're ready, I want this, too. I brush my thumb over her anus, and she tenses and gasps. Not today, sweet Anna, I reassure her, but one day. I want you every way. I want to possess every inch of you. You're mine. Moving on, I ease my finger inside her. She's still wet, and I kneel up behind her and bury myself in her. Ugh! Gently! She cries. I still. Shit. I hold her hips. You okay? Gently. She says. Let me get used to this. Gently. I can do gently. I ease back and then slowly forward, filling her. She groans, and I ease back and ease forward again and again and again. Take it slow. Yes. Good. I've got it now. She murmurs. I groan and move a little faster. She starts mewling with each thrust, and I go faster still. She scrunches up her eyes and opens her mouth, breathing in a gulp of air with each thrust. Fuck, this is exquisite. I close my eyes and tighten my fingers on her hips and lose myself in her, over and over, until I feel her pulling in me inside. She cries out and comes, taking me with her as I climax inside her, calling out her name. Anna! Baby! I collapse beside her, feeling utterly, utterly spent, and lie for a moment, releasing relishing my release. I cannot li leave Anna trussed up, so sitting up, I unbuckle her from the spreader bar. She curls up beside me while I rub the life back into her ankles and wrists. When she wiggles her fingers and toes, I lie back down, pulling her against me. She mumbles something unintelligible, and I realize she's asleep. I kiss her forehead, tug the duvet over her, and I sit up and watch her. Taking a strand of her hair, I rub it between my fingers, so soft. I curl the tendril around my index finger. See, I'm tied to you, Anna. I kiss the end of her hair and sit back and look out at the darkening sky. I know on the ground it will be dark, but up here, the last vestiges of the day are straining, are staining the sky pink and orange and opal. We're still in the light. That's what she's done. Brought light into my life. Light and love. But she still hasn't given me an answer. Say yes, Anna. Be my wife. Please. She stirs and opens her eyes. I could watch you sleep forever, Anna. I kiss her forehead once more. She gives me a drowsy smile and closes her eyes. I never want to let you go. I never want to go, she rambles. Never let me go. I need you, I whisper. And her lips lift in a tender smile as her breathing evens out. She's asleep. All right, that was the end of chapter seven. We'll pick up on chapter eight in the next video. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I know that I am. Uh, yeah, we're getting really close to being done. That's all that's left. <laughs> okay. So until next time, that's Reading by Read. Bye, guys.